<clears throat> so in the next talk is um, it's called Craft, Lightweight Tweakable Block Cipher with Efficient Protection Against Fold Attacks. It's a paper by Christoph Bayerle, Gregor Leander, Amir Mohadi, and Sharam Razuzade. Um, and uh, uh, Sharam will give the talk. Thank you. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to present Craft, uh, which is a new block, uh, lightweight to equal block cipher, and it is designed to be efficient in uh, protection against differential fault analysis attacks. In last two decades, uh, it is known that secrets stored or processed by uh, implementation of an algorithm can be recovered uh, using physical attacks. Uh, one of the uh, important and most known uh, such attacks is differential fault analysis or briefly saying DFA attacks uh, that attacker tries to uh, tries to disturb the device during its operation. He uh, computes uh, output for the same input twice, one with and one without fault injection and by comparing the output he finds some uh, information about the secret value. The most simplest uh, countermeasure to protect uh, implementation is uh, duplication, where in the implementation uh, there is uh, the function is uh, implemented twice, and by comparing the uh, the outputs, uh, if they are equal implementation gives uh, the output, otherwise it, it gives some uh, random or null value. Uh, more complicated uh, countermeasures are concurrent error detections, which by adding uh, some redundancy to the original uh, implementation, it checks if the fault is injected or not. In a recent paper named Impeccable Secrets, uh, <coughs> We introduced a technique that guarantees detection of uh, fault injections up to a certain number in any place of the implementation. And there we consider two adversary models uh, that uh, the attacker is able to make at most uh, some number of uh, injections in any place of the implementation, uh, either in one clock cycle or uh, every clock cycle. Uh, clock cycle, depending on the adversary model. Uh, to make it clear, uh, in these models, uh, SFA um, uh, safe error or stacked uh, models are not covered, so SFA kind of attacks or CIFA kind of attacks are not uh, covered by this uh, countermeasure, and they need some extra countermeasure to be uh, protected. One important result from uh, that paper was independence property that says uh, to prevent implementation, uh, to prevent uh, fault propagation, the coordinate function of each, func uh, each operation has to be implemented uh, independently. Uh, for example, considering Iskini's uh, mixed column, the implementation is uh, shown in this picture that it needs three XOR gates. Uh, but if attacker injects false, uh, fault in the second, uh, second XOR gate that is shown by uh, red, it will propagate, uh, it will affect two output bits. In other meaning, uh, by injecting one fault, uh, one bit fault, uh, attacker gains, two, uh, gains one more bit in the output. Using independence property uh, uh, to uh, prevent fault propagation, we should uh, implement in implementation in the bottom picture that uh, it will need four XOR gates in a set of three. Uh, on that paper, we. Uh, uh, Considering different size for redundancy, we uh, examined uh, our constructions for this six uh, 
known, well-known uh, lightweight black ciphers and find out that they are not efficiently uh, designed for uh, protection against uh, differential fault analysis attacks. This was our motivation for designing Craft. That in uh, that our first goal was to design a tweakable black uh, black cipher. That in algorithmic level, uh, it is efficient uh, efficient in protection against DFA attacks. And we also wanted. Uh, craft to be tweakable and also pro, uh, provides the decryption in the same uh, structure for encryption with uh, a small area overhead. Uh, and also to have uh, an easy security analysis, we, uh, we decided to use uh, already known uh, design methods. To this reason, uh, we chose a skinny-like structure with one 128-bit uh, key and 64-bit uh, block and tweak size. What we designed is uh, iteration of 31 uh, rounds, and it, it appends one linear, uh, linear round to the uh, end. And there... Uh, the round function can uh, can be shown as the picture in the bottom. That uh, it starts with uh, linear operations that, and ends with uh, non-linear one. Also, the last round, which is linear one, doesn't add any security to the uh, design. <coughs> but uh, as you see, it will help us in the in the decryption structure. In more detail, uh, uh, there are five operations in each round uh, that all of them are involutions. It starts with mixed column, uh, that an, uh, a binary matrix M is multiplied to each column, and then uh, round, const uh, round constants are exhorted to only fifths and fourths uh, enable of the state. Then uh, round tweaky is exhorted to all of the state, and uh, the last linear operation is nibble permutation. That permutation P uh, changes the position of nibble in the state and ends with a nonlinear operation, uh, which is an SPAX layer uh, that, that's applied to each nibble. And the, uh, the difference of the last round is that uh, it doesn't involve, include uh, two last operations. So it iterates uh, the round function 32 times, but in the last round, it gives the output before permutation of nibbles. And about two key schedule, uh, we separate the key to its two halves and simply XOR it with uh, two key and this will give, uh, give us uh, the first two tweaks, but uh, for security reasons, we need to use a uh, tweak in another way, uh, XOR it with uh, another way to keys, and to provide other, uh, other two tweaks, we used a uh, Q permutation to change the nibbles of uh, tweak, and again, XOR it with uh, round keys, and we will have uh, these four tweak keys. And then, depending on the reminder of uh, round index to the four, uh, one of these tweak keys are XOR to the state. About uh, design rationale, uh, Uh, yeah, briefly saying from all the options that we had, we chose the ones that are uh, efficient in uh, concurrent uh, uh, in the construction for concurrent error detections. Uh, also, we wanted them to be involutions uh, to provide decryption structure in the same structure for encryption with small modifications. So far. 
decryption in the with modifying tweaky and reversing order of rank constants uh, decryption of craft is it's uh, is the same as its encryption and that is uh, because of these two equations that the first one says changing place of s box uh, operation and permutation of nibbles doesn't change the uh, structure and also we can change the order of uh, mix column at run constant and at tweaky with only modifying the tweak value. Then decryption uh, equation can, can be, uh, which is the reverse of encryption. And as uh, all the operations are involutions, we can just uh, reverse the, uh, to inverse the encryption equation, we need to uh, reverse the order of operations which is shown in the second equation. And using two previously shown uh, equations, we can change the position of uh, S-box with permutation of nibbles, which is shown in red color, and also change the position of at tweaky with mixed column uh, by modifying uh, the tweak value, tweaky value. Then we will reach to the third equation and considering with uh, uh, with equation for encryption, uh, it is same up to reversing order of uh, run constants and uh, modifying two e key value. Uh, for the other round of uh, round functions, we search uh, <coughs> exhaustively through uh, through all options that we had, and we chose the ones that uh, provides us uh, the most security. Here I only talk about the, uh, the way that we chose SBOX and uh, for the rest you can see the paper. Yeah. Uh, each SBOX in, uh, in CED construction need to be implemented with a redundant SBOX. For example, uh, in case of four-bit redundancy, SBOX uh, S need to be uh, implemented together with S4 which is defined uh, with this equation and F4 is multiplication with the shown matrix. Uh, and this matrix is part of uh, generator matrix for uh, extended Hamming code, which is uh, able to detect uh, up to three, uh, three bit fault injections. But uh, there is a problem uh, if we uh, search through all S boxes. Uh, that is, there are about four, uh, 46 million uh, millions uh, involutory S boxes. Uh, implementing and synthesizing them are not possible. What we we did is uh, taking benefit of independence property, which says each coordinate function of S box has to be uh, must be implemented in uh, uh, separately. That means cost, uh, implementation cost for a S box and a redundant S box uh, is sum of area size for each coordinate function. And uh, in all of uh, uh, all of the cases that we considered for uh, redundancy size, uh, only certain Boolean functions uh, were important for each S box. So if we have implementation for all of the balanced Boolean functions, we can uh, say, uh, evaluate the uh, cost for implementation of the SBOX in our constructions. And there are around 13,000 uh, for bit balanced Boolean functions, and this number up to bit permutation equivalence is only 730 balanced Boolean functions. And uh, what we did is to implement and synthesize this 730 balanced Boolean functions, which took around half a day and extended to all of the 13,000 balanced, balanced Boolean functions. Then for each SBOX, we just need to do certain uh, lookup tables and uh, say what is the cost implementation for this SBOX. Uh, searching for all of the searching through all of the S boxes, uh, we decided to use the chosen one, uh, which is also uh, the S box for Midori. And 
it is not the uh, not only the smallest one also it uh, provides the minimum possible uh, uniformity and linearity about <coughs> tweaky schedule uh, for key schedule there were two options for us uh, the first one was update uh, key run key updating and the next was key uh, run key alternating that the first one uh, needs at least 128 uh, registers in run based implementation but the other one needs only 64 multiplexers to be lightweight in uh, implementation we decided to use the second one and about the tweak schedule uh, we decided to simply ignore it with the key but uh, uh, if we use only uh, two, uh, two first tweaks that would cause uh, time data memory trade up attacks uh, in the related key model. And to prevent it, uh, we need to use Q uh, permutation to change the tweak in, uh, in the runs that has uh, same, the same uh, round keys. Uh, to to provide maximum possible security against time data memory trade of attacks, uh, this queue must be a, a, a circular one. And there are around 2 to the 40 uh, such a permutations. But uh, checking for all of these 2 to the 40, uh, the security provided by these 2 to the 40 uh, permutations are not possible. And what we did is to choose uh, around 1,000 uh, of them and uh, evaluate the security provided by them and the current one that we already chose is uh, the one has uh, most active boxes in related tweak model, uh, related tweak differential attack. When designing finished, uh, we checked uh, the security provided by uh, our design. We evaluate sec uh, security of craft uh, against the attacks that was the most vulnerable ones to, uh, to the similar design block ciphers. Uh, we listed the attacks that we already analyzed, them, analyzed uh, against craft. And uh, I ask you to see the paper if you are interested. And uh, the security that we are claiming is that Craft uh, provides 124-bit security in a related to each model. And to emphasize that uh, we don't claim anything about uh, chosen key, known key, or related key models. The most promising attack is uh, an accelerated exhaustive search. That, uh, that is because of related key property of uh, two key schedule. And uh, it says that if difference delta is such that uh, all the values in nibbles are the same, then Q permutation of delta uh, will not change its value. Then using uh, either K0, K1 uh, tweak, or a K0 plus delta, K1 plus delta, tweak plus delta, uh, both will uh, give same tweak keys. And attacker using uh, this property uh, by asking to, uh, to encryption of the same uh, plain text under 16 different tweak, tweaks, uh, he can find the master key uh, with to the uh, 124 uh, computations. Uh, after analyzing it, we compared our uh, design with uh, six block ciphers that already uh, examined in Impeccable Circuits paper, and also we had some extra uh, block ciphers that reviewers add. We again implemented and uh, I didn't bring them all here. I just bring uh, Skinny, which we found it more reasonable. 
And uh, by skinny, I mean skinny with 64 uh, bl uh, block size, but uh, 128 uh, key, and also 122, which uh, uh, supports tweak. Uh, in all case, uh, for each of uh, for each set of five uh, five bars, the smallest one is. Uh, the unprotected version, and then the red one is with one bit and uh, increasingly up to four bit redundancy. As you see, uh, in all cases, uh, craft is smaller than uh, skinny, and also when it uh, supports tweak, it is again uh, smaller than skinny 120, uh, 192. Yeah. Uh, to Conclude this talk. We designed uh, we designed craft, which is a lightweight to equal block cipher that is efficiently designed for protection against uh, differential fault tunnels attacks. And uh, as far as we know, it is the smallest block cipher with 128-bit uh, key in the round-based implementation. And uh, just with some area overhead, it supports 64-bit tweak and also supports uh, decryption in the same uh, structure for encryption. And it has 124-bit security in related key model. That was the end of my, end of my talk and would be happy to answer your questions. Any questions? There is a question. Uh, I have a general question. Uh, uh, which application, uh, what is the motivation of designing tweakable uh, lightweight black cipher? So uh, for tweakable black cipher, for example, it can be used in uh, encrypting memories because we can consider the address of the memory as tweak. But uh, in lightweight uh, setting, in constraint devices, do you have any application to for uh, using tweakable block cipher? Uh, for this, I'm not that much expert to, uh, to say what is the reason to have a tweakable uh, block cipher, but let's say uh, we don't need to change the key every, uh, m most often. And yeah. not only uh, in the, uh, also lightweight, uh, Black ciphers need to be uh, tweakable because, uh, like in RFID implementations, so. but you don't need to have uh, you don't need to change the key most most often that it was not uh, if it was not uh, tweakable. I'm not sure if I could answer. Okay. Any other question? Okay, uh, you said uh, your cipher is easy to predict against uh, fault attacks. So the obvious question would be, do you did some practical evaluation in the end as well? Or how uh, do you verify that indeed you get this what do you mean security against four bit faults or whatever? Uh, having the, uh, the, the chip and implement some, uh, inject some faults into it. No, we didn't try it, but it is in plan because uh, or uh, because uh, implementing the chip is time consuming. Uh, we have this in plan, but uh, uh, what we did is uh, we write uh, some uh, simulations and uh, we checked it and uh, it was able to detect uh, the uh, claim the, the guaranteed uh, number of bits in the implementation. Okay, and, and the default model was that you can uh, skip some instructions like the XOR as you, as you showed in the example, or can you do more than that? Uh, sorry, again? Okay. So in, in, in the default model, you assume that you can skip some instructions or fold a particular gate, or can an attacker do more than that? Like cutting wires or stuff like that? 
attacker is able to implement fault in every place of uh, implementation by uh, by use of differential fault tolerances, not uh, like CIFA kind of attacks. Right? Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe I can answer later. So you you still have a question? So can you comment how you generate round constants? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was 40 pages. Uh, the paper was 40 pages. Uh, we used uh, two LFSRs, one 4-bit and one, uh, one 3-bit. Yeah, here. And we add them to only fourth and fifth nibble. We checked uh, security against nonlinear invariance as well. Uh, it, Other questions? Okay, if there are no questions, let's uh, thank uh, Shagam and the other speakers again. <laughs> and I think that concludes today. Okay, then uh, I hope to see all of you tomorrow morning.